my first exposure to energy bills was when I bought my first two apartment houses when I was 20 years old. I knew nothing about mechanical systems, although I had a good background as a bicycle mechanic and my father had a machine shop in the basement of the house where I grew up. So technical things in general I was good with, so I wasn't as scared as I would have been if I had no background. But I had never held a pipe wrench in my hand. I didn't know anything about that stuff. And I couldn't do anything about the tax bill, the mortgage, the insurance bill. But I got this crazy energy bill that went up and down each month. And I wondered why. We have rent control in New York, so I couldn't raise the rent no matter how well I took care of the building. So my only hope at getting ahead financially was to lower the energy bill if I could. So I noticed even in the summer, the bill jumped up and down. It made no sense to me because nobody in that neighborhood went on vacation. I didn't go on vacation. I was living there. So I asked around. Nobody seemed to know why. I went to Barnes & Noble. There was only one Barnes & Noble at the time. Nothing good there. Not much of any good now. So I just asked in the supply house and asked people I knew who owned buildings and asked people in the neighborhood and nobody seemed to understand. The story was that some buildings burn more energy than other buildings because some buildings burn more energy than other buildings. And that was the story. Some buildings use less, some buildings use more and nobody knows why. So I sat in front of the boiler many hours watching it come on and off and looking at the controls, watching everything run. I should have sat on the steps of the building across the street and looked at how many windows in my buildings were open. That's the key. That's still the key now. New York is largely apartment houses, largely steam heat. Steam heat is difficult or impossible depending on the type of system it's difficult or impossible to control room by room. And no matter how good a job you do, you're gonna have overheating with steam. So the trick then and the trick now, stop the overheating of the space and also the domestic hot water. It's really easy to overheat the domestic hot water in an apartment house, it's a common problem. So gradually I learned to minimize the overheating of the space and to stop completely the overheating of the water. 120F at the faucet, that's 49C, no hotter, no colder. Nobody gets a cold shower, no incentive for somebody to turn the temperature up. No tenant calling their cold in their apartment, no incentive for the super to go and turn the heat up building wide. So later, when people started building new buildings in New York, they'd ask me, hey, come here, look at my blueprints, tell me if this system will work. I'm like, nope. You got to pay me a lot of money to get it to work before the people move in. People didn't want to hear that, so they said, Oh, you designed it. Well, I'm not an engineer, but one thing led to another. I got tied up with Chris Benedict. She's an architect, she designs new buildings. So I started designing heating systems for her buildings, and sometimes I work for other people, mostly only her. And I've designed over 100 heating systems now, about 80 buildings with Chris and then others for retrofit or straightening out existing buildings. Basically, thermostat in every room is the most important thing. One combustion appliance for both heat and hot water. Never overheat the hot water. Uh, do seal combustion if you can so you get rid of the standby losses up the chimney or put the boiler on the roof. If you're not doing seal combustion, it's almost as good to put the boiler on the roof so you don't have 100 feet tall chimney sucking cold air through the boiler. With those tricks, it uh, sounds easy, but it's sometimes hard to get all those things done. Hot water heat, the pump that circulates the water to the radiators, we have uh, average POR of 20, I've found. That's the pump oversizing ratio. The pump that pumps the water to the radiators is usually oversized by a factor of about 20, sometimes much more but I was an average, so I put pumps that people think are obscenely tiny. Uh, that keeps the pump from pushing the thermostat open, so you can actually control temperature. Keep the controls simple, keep everything simple. 
uh, keep everything cheap, keep everything reliable. Uh, those are my secret tricks. Read and follow the manufacturer's instructions. That's another secret of mine. None of my competitors do it. It's a secret business method. Read and follow the instructions.